And um, thank you. And then uh, I don't want folks to miss our wonderful beginning. So <laughs> let's do a let's do a panelist vote. Should we give it another minute or should we go ahead and go? Panelists. Raise your hand if you think we should just start. Okay. All right. <laughs> Great. All right, so um, I want to uh, begin by introducing uh, Rebecca Vasquez Ortiz. I think she may be ready, but it looks like you are you, are you ready to get uh, moving there. So Rebecca is going to start us off with a uh, a bit of an uh, acknowledgement, and then we'll 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 go from there. And we can't hear you, at least I can't hear you. No sound. <laughs> Having a microphone problem. Okay. Still don't hear you. I don't know if it's your headset. Um, can you hear me now? There, yes. Okay, that's good. Uh, sorry, I have my <laughs> earphones on and now they seem to have gone out. But um, I'd like to give the land acknowledgement today before we go ahead and start. Um, Arlo acknowledges that I am currently in the unceded territory of the Old Lone Nation who inhabited the San Francisco Bay Area and continue to exist as a people surviving genocide. The Ohlone people consisted of over 50 tribes and they spanned the northern coast of California, speaking the Chochenyo language, and they were um, highly skilled basket weavers. So as we enter our work engaging in empowering marginalized communities today, let this statement serve to further our respect and curiosity to your own community and also other unceded indigenous territories across North America. Statements are meaningless if not followed with action. So I welcome you to open your mind to practice and raise voices that will center the spiritual, emotional, and physical well being of First Nation peoples across Turtle Island. Arlo would like to acknowledge the original inhabitants of each of our geographical locations today and give gratitude for the opportunity to live, work, and learn on traditional homelands. So please take a moment to pay respect to the elders who remind us that we are stewards of Mother Earth and all of her inhabitants, including the flora and fauna across the Americas. And we do this today, especially on the International Day of Women, and we welcome you to reflect on the important role of women and Native people across North America. Thank you. Thank you for that beautiful land acknowledgement. I, I love uh, all of the wonderful words that you just shared with us. So welcome everyone. We really are excited to have all of you joining us today to learn a little bit more about ARLO, which is the acronym for the Regional Leaders of Open Education Network. Um, as you may be aware, Arlo is a project of the CCC OER, which is itself a subsidiary of OE Global. So we're kind of nested within CCC OER, which is nested within OE Global. And so Arlo is about bringing together leaders from across North America, across institutional boundaries, across regional boundaries. And the idea is for people that are engaged in the network to um, build open education strategic plans, but to especially focus those plans on underserved student populations, underrepresented students populations, under, um, under met student populations and all the ways that students uh, can be marginalized. And our program is about thinking about that quite intentionally as, as, as people are building their strategic plans for open education. So um, I'm really excited that we have people on our panel that are participating in all of the different ways in which 
folks can be part of this network. So we have a couple of people that are our leadership advisors. You just heard from one, Rebecca. One of our other leadership advisors is Esperanza. Um, we have uh, collaborators with the program that do a lot of work and give advice and do one-on-one -on -one mentoring with participants in the program. We have uh, Suzanne and Alegria here for that. We have students that are, we think of our students as mentors for faculty and staff that bring their wisdom and their uh, experiences to, into the network. We have Elizabeth and Bridget here. Um, and then we have two of the participants that have been part of Arlo, one from the cohort one, we have Kathy Germano, and then uh, someone from cohort two, we have Manisha. Uh, and so eight folks here. And I'm, I'm really excited that all eight of you have agreed to be able to speak to uh, our audience today to talk more about uh, what Arlo is about, what Arlo has been about for you. And so I'm gonna ask uh, each of our, uh, each of the participants here to just uh, introduce themselves since I didn't really do a formal introduction, just you know, introduce yourself, your institution, your role for Arlo. Um, I'm going to start with uh, Alegria, and then uh, uh, Alegria is going to talk to us about what she feels the Arlo program offers and things that she enjoys and has gained from being a collaborator and anything else that she'd like to say. So, so take it away, Alegria. Thank you so much, and thank you for having all of us come and speak about this amazing um, Arlo experience we've all been having. As Karen said, I am Alegria Rivadeneira and I'm an Arlo collaborator. In my other identity, I'm distinguished professor at Colorado State University in Pueblo, Colorado. We're a regional comprehensive university and a Hispanic serving institution. So we serve the underserved. I joyfully joined Arlo as a collaborator last year and it has enriched my life mm, in ways that I did not anticipate. So uh, what, does Arlo pro what does the Arlo program offer our participants? Well, it offers so much and I don't have so much time to speak. So I'm gonna focus on two things, information and community. So in information, participants get curated and digestible information that focuses on open education with the strong focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion. You know, there's, there's so much out there uh, that can be very overwhelming, but the Arlo designers have taken just enough to inform us and get us on our way and then know where we can get more if we want. So that is very helpful. And the second one, the community, well, the participants get a caring team of people that we can count on. Uh, I think we so often work on silos and we feel very alone. And um, we all need academic families to support us. So I really think of Arlo as an academic family. Um, this is a community where we collaborate and generate a pool of knowledge that we can all use. So to me, that has been um, amazing. And then uh, you wanted to know what are some of the things I enjoy uh, or gain from being an Arlo collaborator? Well, regarding that, I think there's both personal and professional um, things that I absolutely enjoy. Uh, first of all, I'm inspired by the leadership of Arlo. I have taken a lot of the things I have learned and now I'm applying them to my own leadership. So that has been amazing. And I'm also inspired by the, all these people who want to do good. <laughs> the world seems so negative and tough these days. And it's just so beautiful to see that there are people who want to do good things. So that has restored my faith in humanity. <laughs> and I'm also amazed at what people are able to achieve with very little support. People come to us uh, looking for uh, ways to develop their strategic plans and we realize how little support they've had and how much they've been able to do and it's so inspiring. Uh, I also love the camaraderie and openness to experiences that all our participants have. Uh, some of them are deans and you know just have very high positions and they still uh, are very open to learning and, and experiencing uh, open education. So that is very nice. Uh, I also like 
uh, the opportunity to share my own experiences, uh, the good and the bad, and the bad even more, <laughs> because it feels like any suffering that I have done to learn things had a good purpose, which is that now that experience can help somebody else. So I absolutely love that and the, the opportunity to help others. Um, the last two things I really love uh, are the student perspective. We have uh, students who come and speak with us and it's amazing. Sometimes we just talk amongst administrators and professors and <laughs> we don't listen to the students as much. So that has been absolutely enlightening. And last but not least, I would say our focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion. I know this is part of open education, but we are so um, intentional about it, so explicit all the time that it really brings it together uh, as to what is our mission. So those are the things that I enjoy. How about that? Great, thank you. That was awesome. Thank you so much. And I should mention also that Alegria and Suzanne are two of nine collaborators. So we have a number of others that, um, that aren't here today. So, and I'm gonna move next to Suzanne who's also gonna introduce herself and address some of those same questions. Absolutely, hi, hi everybody. Uh, I'm Suzanne Joaquim. I uh, am part of the California's, uh, California Community College OER initiative. And I'm also a biology faculty at a, a small community college up in Northern California. So the first thing to address is what uh, participants get out of the Arlo experience. And I think there's really two things. So Allegri, I agree with you. I'm gonna narrow it down to two. There's a whole bunch, but I have to pick a, a few because we've got uh, just a few minutes. And one is the ability to really do a deep dive into a strategic plan. I think a lot of us start this work with a plan Kind of vague in our mind and we have an idea but the 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 framework that that they've developed for how to actually outline the plan and then having a collaborator work with them having other folks that are building their plans and they work together it, there's so few times where we get to pause and really do a deep dive into what we're trying to accomplish and i think that's just a wonderful uh, opportunity the community i think i'll agree you, you talked about the community and so I, i'm I'm going to second that the the sessions are great the um we're also putting together ongoing sessions which is lovely so it doesn't kind of just end uh and the oeg connect platform as a way to connect with people more globally uh, and so it's these layers of uh, networking that i think can be really helpful as far as what i found uh helpful for for me personally, I have to say it's kind of the same thing. I mean, the community is amazing. I'm part of the, the collaborators and everybody else and the participants. There's all these really amazing people that are part of this network and, um, and it's, it's just fabulous. And uh, let's see, the sessions are great. I do, I do wanna mention the student sessions are just so helpful. And I think Karen, you, you called the students mentors and I, I absolutely agree. They, they've really helped me think through what we're actually trying to accomplish, which is, um, has been just incredibly helpful. And that's about it. The, on, the only other thing I really wanted to end on is just a big thank you to Karen for putting all this together. You're an amazing guide and mentor. And this is why our group is so much fun to be a part of. And so thank you. Anyway, that's my piece. Thank you for that, Suzanne. I, I think uh, lots of people, including all of the people here, are <laughs> the reason for that. But thank you. Thank you for that uh, credit. Um, I'm excited to uh, now uh, introduce the, our next two folks that are going to talk a little bit, which are students. And um, Bridget Ramundo is going to speak for a little bit. And again, uh, Bridget and Elizabeth were actually two of seven different students that we had involved. So uh, go ahead, Bridget. All right, thank you so much, Karen. So hi everyone, my name is Bridget. My pronouns are she, he, z. Um, I am a student speaker and uh, I think I'm gonna just start on my experiences and insights as a student with the RLOE program and also the faculty that work there. So my first real job was actually as an intern for the Salt Lake Community College um, Open Education Resources Department. And that was really amazing. And it's what introduced me into this community. And being able to speak on the last panel was very validating and inspiring. And it also made me very hopeful because like some people have mentioned before, this community is really uplifting. It really wants to do good things for the future. Um, 
just really quick, I want to check. Can you still hear me? <laughs> yep. Okay, great. Internet's a little bit rockier. Uh, in addition to that, I would say that it was also very helpful to get the perspective of the educators, since, you know, I am a student and I get to see the student perspective, but um, because I also want to be an educator in the future, uh, it's really interesting to see the way that people are incorporating pieces of their past in and their experience in education and modernizing that to the needs of students of today. Uh, in addition to that, I also got to know other students on the panel and their backgrounds and their experiences were so helpful in helping me to expand my perspective. And it was overall just very informative. Um, also, the next thing that I was asked to bring up was what did I gain from the RLOE program? And I would say that it was incredibly helpful to me because of the community that I mentioned earlier. Uh, the outreach is extremely helpful since I do a lot of youth advocate work, and um, I really like being able to meet other people who are passionate about the same things that I am. Uh, also, I do a lot of work in accessible education, so speaking with the RLOE or the ARLO uh, is a great way to be able to live my values and bring that to life. It was also chance for me to reflect on my overall experience in you know higher education and with open education resources and be able to advocate for um, my causes as mentioned earlier so I just want to thank everyone for coming here to listen to us and also again for the coordinators like Karen for being so helpful all right thank you so much for that really appreciate your inputs here and uh, um, next, I'm going to ask uh, Elizabeth to introduce herself more fully and to also talk about her experiences and insights as a student and working within Arlo and, and all of the things that uh, she wants to tell us. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Hi, thank you. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, awesome. Um, so thank you um, for having me back. Um, uh, my name is Elizabeth. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I attend Western Oregon University and I'm a fourth year student and I'll be graduating this spring, which is very exciting. Um, so it, I, I remember talking about this during the last kind of session we had for Arlo and um, it was kind of like, well, how did you get here? Um, and I kind of got here by chance. Um, I, I had a professor that is a part of Arlo and she thought that I really just fit into this um, sort of program and the principles that it stands for. Um, and it really has been, uh, I would say life-changing because um, it brings so many people together from literally across the world um, and, it is able to uh, share our experiences. And I think the greatest insight I realized is that we have a lot of the same struggles um, when it comes to higher education. And I think, however, bringing faculty and, and people that have been involved in so many areas around higher education and education as a whole has been really transformative in this idea that we can really, um, when it, there's, power in numbers um, and it has really shown me that um, I can continue my advocacy outside of higher education um, because I mean look at us all um, and it has really launched me into pursuing my own initiatives for open education resources um, and I talked briefly about how um, I'm pursuing a project on campus to really expand open resources um, because I I continuously see students struggling. Um, and the reality is faculty see that and, and faculty and staff see that. And I think that's a really important narrative that needs to be discussed because uh, I, I can't remember the quote exactly, but um, you know, in order to address a problem, you need to be able to talk about it. And being able to afford textbooks, for example, is a really big topic. Um, and so being able to come to this sort of platform and have that conversation has been really, really amazing. And I've been able to continue to connect with people that I have met through um, this amazing program. Um, and um, I, I truly think that it's nothing short of being transformative in your life um, and really just kind of motivating me to continue advocating for people um, because 
this program has really just like meant so much to me um and and it's really pushed me to just keep keep doing the right thing honestly um and so i think that um i just want to make sure i address yeah i think i addressed everything in the questions but uh i think as a whole i just really want to thank you all for for really bringing me back but also um continuing to listen to students um i think that um in higher education, many times student voices aren't listened to, um, but being able to come to a space where um, that is celebrated um, has really been um, really wholesome for me. Um, and so thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you for taking your time and being here with us and teaching us so much. And and I, and I see from your note that you might have actually another event that you have to go to. Elizabeth's a leader of Oregon, Oregon OER initiative. And yeah. uh, I wish you could stay and talk with us more, but you do what you need to do for sure. Yeah, if I can, yeah, I have to jump into that one, but if it ends early, I'll come back. So <laughs> they're doing a same sort of event like this, but um, I just wanted to make sure that I stopped by. So um, thank you so much. Great, thank you. All right, and so um, as I've mentioned, we have uh, folks that have been developing the program, working as collaborators and uh, student mentors, but we have participants that come into the network and work with us. And so um, two of the participants are gonna talk a little bit about their experiences. They're gonna talk about what benefits they got from uh, for participating in the Arlo program. And they're gonna share whatever they can, whatever they would like to share about what it means to create an open ed plan for their institution and anything else that they wanna uh, tell us about the, their process of creating the plan and, and Arlo's support for that. And so um, uh, again, I'm gonna start with uh, Kathy Germano, who's gonna introduce herself more fully and, tell, and, and answer all those questions. Kathy. Thank you, Karen. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for being here today. My name is Kathy Germano. I'm the Director of Learning Services at Excelsior um, College in Albany, New York. Um, like Karen said, I was a participant in this program and I'm kind of gonna go off of a little bit of what Allegra talked about. Um, there's two things that really stood out to me as a benefit. And the first being building these relationships. Um, so for me, the, um, it was more than just building the relationships. It was humanizing the work. It was getting to listen and um, exploring strategies and having discussions such as, how did you go about this? Or um, how did you prepare yourself to pivot if the conversation or the discussion didn't really go in the right direction? Um, those kind of conversations and those kind of connections really are meaningful. They were meaningful to me. And um, so I think that was a huge benefit for me. Um, the second I would say is that the, this is an ongoing connection. When you make connections with people and resources, um, it's a little different than being at a conference because in the conference, you get a few minutes at the end to ask questions and stuff. But because it's already humanized, it's already, you know, you feel comfortable. I, I have no problem reaching out to anybody in this community and saying, hey, I got a question or, or posing a question or saying, do you have a few minutes? I want to go over this with you. I think that is like tremendously important. And, and it's given me so much confidence in keep going, you know, because this is like slow work sometimes having change in big, big or small um, organizations. So those are two benefits that I could, you know, speak of. I could speak of more, but I'm going to limit it to that. But um, the second part is about sharing um, about the process of creating um, my strategic plan. And the first thing I would like to say is there was great care in the developers of this. Um, you know, it was well developed and I felt supported throughout. Um, being in the first cohort, I felt supported, I felt welcomed, it was very inclusive. And, and, you know, I've tried to be involved in different kind of projects here and there, and I haven't felt the amount of welcoming and support that this program has. So I would say that's a big thing. And the second thing is, is that, you know, um, more directly about the strategic plan, is that it's openly shared. 
Love that. Um, it is shared by, you know, um, you know, it gave me opportunity to look at what everybody else was doing. And that, that was really important because it really helped me reflect on some of the things that I was thinking of doing or that I was going to do. And I think that, you know, besides being in line with being open, it just helps have more dialogue. So I think those are two really great parts of, you know, the strategic plan. Um, and I would just like to end by saying, you know, thank you to everybody that was in this community. I feel very grateful to be a part of it. And I would highly recommend it to anyone considering um, joining it because it is very valuable in what you get out of it. So thank you. Oh, no, thank you so much for all of that. I really appreciate it all of your comments, so 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 wonderful. Thank you so much. And yeah, the fact that every participant can look at and read everybody else's strategic plan, there's no you know, need to hide or keep it <laughs> like just to yourself or feel embarrassed that it's not as developed as you want it to be, that that, uh, that open sharing is one of the hallmarks of our, of our network. Uh, so I'm gonna move on to Manisha and let her share her experiences as a participant as well and, and start by introducing yourself too. Thank you. Uh, Manisha Nitsigasun, Notavi Balwant, Nigavi Bimla, Nitatos Khan Masnaikan Kamik, Muskwa Cheese Cultural College, Ms. Tahi Nina Naskamon, Pematisowin, Emi Kosian, Kinanasko Mitin. Uh, my name is Manisha, and I introduced myself in plain screen, and I'll uh, explain um, what I said in plain screen. Um, so, Nitsi Gasun means my name is, but Nitsi means belly button, Asun means I'm connected to. So, Nitsi Gasun, uh, when I'm saying it, it's kinship and it's my family relationship. Um, so, my name is uh, Nitsi Gasun. Um, then I said um, Notavi, which is my father. Um, Tau is the root word in Notavi, and Tau stands for center of my universe. Then I said um, land acknowledgement, Muskwa cheese. Muskwa uh, in plain Cree wide dialect, you're in Muskwa cheese means bear. Um, Waches is hills or you know, dense forest or trees. Um, and then um, I said, I'm grateful. Um, Ms. Tahi, uh, which also means I thank the creator uh, for creating all, all of you. It is you I thank the creator for. Um, so I'm, I'm really very grateful to be in this RLOE com community. I think it is fantastic. You know, uh, I'm actually from India uh, I'm, and I've been working with uh, Muscogee's Cultural College uh, for more than 10 years, and I'm the Dean of Library and Information Services. I just find this ROLE so exciting, stimulating. And I thought rather than taking time to talk, why don't I paste and summarize what Kathy said in chat? <laughs> you can see um, excellent um, team um, of people, and you can hear the information uh, from different uh, viewpoints, you know, uh, from a student point of view, from a, um, you know, from a collaborator point of view. Um, and you get live feedback immediately from the community itself. So I, I just find it um, that you'll have lots of templates and resources because it's good to use templates like I found that I discovered uh, student permission forms and even uh, e-portfolios, um, uh, evaluation assessments like open assessments, I was not aware about it. Um, See, we can promote open education with these tools, which we are learning that tech tools. Uh, so I had like one-on-one -on -one support and in the evening, there were classes in the evening and I loved it, where, um, you know, the tech tool workshop, carpentry style, where somebody took me through some of these new open uh, um, technology tools, which are there, uh, and especially for languages, indigenous languages. And I found it very fascinating uh, because I was able to immediately use that in my organization. See, any knowledge which we are learning, we want to apply it. And if we are immediately able to apply it uh, in our organization, then our colleagues will see the benefit of it. 
it's a very safe um, community. Um, I would strongly encourage uh, if you're interested in learning more about uh, open education, then please do join this program. Um, Kim, Karen, uh, my immediate supervisor was Uruj. She's, you know, and Wayne uh, too in the group. Um, when I had my mission statement, when I was working on the strategic plan, I had, um, you know, drafting a mission statement or a, or a vision statement, um, which is very specific to my organization because we are a tribal college. We believe um, as open as possible and as closed as necessary. So my vision statement was um, open education of uh, all sorts, um, you know, as open as possible and as close as necessary. So, and uh, then more questions were asked, um, you know, about the context of the statement and it helped me tune in the words. So sometimes, you know, how to write a sentence uh, like a mission statement, which make, which is meaningful to my organization, as well as it is acceptable to the professional uh, world was very fascinating. Um, and uh, I think um, I can type in um, the strategic planning more like I typed in in chat, <laughs> the key points, which uh, Kathy said too. Um, but I want to, I want you to hear the sound of the language, you know, like learn indigenous languages, promote indigenous open education resources. And through this program, I really discovered K-12 uh, Washington, they have a open languages uh, program, uh, like you can learn Sanskrit, Hindi, so many uh, like less taught languages and there are open education resources available um, right in, you know, in Washington, in your state. Um, so use them. For me, it, it was such a fantastic discovery um, to see those examples. Um, and it's a model which can be applied for other indigenous languages. So I'll just take one minute so you can hear the sound of an indigenous language because I really think it's very powerful. Uh, these are the syllabics, ABCs, um, you know, rather than saying ABC in English, these are um, the uh, 36 syllabics. A, E, E, O, Pa, P, P, O, Ta, Te, Ti, To, Ka, Ke, Ki, Ko, Cha, Che, Chi, Cho, Ma, Me, Mi, Mo, Na, Ne, Ni, No, Sa, Se, Si, So, Ya, Ye, Ye, Yo. You know, so these are our basic alphabets. And to me, well, if we are able to create more open education um, materials to learn the plain scree or other indigenous languages and assessments, because we are an academic environment. So we need open assessments for these languages. Um, and to be introduced to these tools, I was not aware of these tools. I just find it very fascinating, exciting. Once again, thank you to all of you, you know, it's a great team and I sincerely appreciate being part of this program. Except Moistas, so that's another final teaching in plain scree, we never say bye. What we say, except Moistas, which means that's it for now, <laughs> till we meet again later. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Oh my gosh, I could listen to you all day long and I wish you had more time. Yes, yes. Just one, so one, one more thing I want to add. I apologize. Sorry. Is no. um, um, from this um, training sessions when uh, I love the structure of the program, you know, the both the live and asynchronous. I, I, it, it fits in so beautifully. I have never attended a program like this. So the structure is unique. And um, someone mentioned baby steps. So one baby steps in our discussions, which we were having was to um, weave in mental health and wellness in all your programs or open education practices. Like, you know, instructors wouldn't want to know what do I do when students don't want to keep the camera on. So we created like case studies. So using mental health and wellness, and we created these wellness kits um, about uh, powwow, uh, flow, uh, mindful beating, you know, ribbon skirt teachings, rattle songs. So, you know, if you're an indigenous organization, you can gently introduce open education if people do not know about open education through mental health and wellness. So, XA Moisters, and thank you. That's perfect. Thank you so much. That, that, that's really great. And we're, we're, we're going to move on. And um, I'm glad I'm not Esperanza who has to follow that. But Esperanza is a dynamite in her own right and um, one of our leadership advisors. And she's gonna talk a little bit about what it's been like to be a leadership team member, to, 
to play a role in actually shaping this program and anything else that you'd like to say. So, so start by introducing yourself and take it from there, Esperanza. Uh, thank you, Karen. Uh, my name is Esperanza Zenon. I'm a physics and physical science faculty member at River Parishes Community College in Gonzales, Louisiana. Uh, I just want to start by saying, Manisha, wow. Uh, I'm, I'm just absolutely floored. I mean, you know, some, some presentations, they just, you know, it's like in one ear, out the other, as my mother would say. But uh, Manisha's went right through the ear, straight to the heart, you know, in, in, in a way that uh, I rarely experience at a conference, right? So I, I want to thank you for that beauty, Manisha. We, you know, in today's climate, uh, any beauty that we can find, we have to hold on to it, right? Um, and so, um, you know, Arlo has definitely been a big part of that whole um, human process for me. Um, I, I've met people and and learned things that will stay with me for the rest of my life as a member of Arlo. Um, you know, the, the warmth um, and, and you, you feel the love, right? I, I tell everybody, you know, that, that, that is the key, right? And so um, um, I, I never could put it this way. I've been in leadership roles before. I, I, I spent quite a bit of time in the military, but it's a different kind of thing, right? Um, I never considered myself a leader where this open process and movement was concerned, right? Because, you know, I, I felt like maybe like some students feel sometimes, I don't know enough, right? But this group um, helped me to see that leading means doing the work. That, that's a beautiful thing to know that you can be considered a leader and something as special and life-changing as open education because you're doing the work, because you're um, you know, learning more, growing more, giving more, serving more, right? I, I don't know where else, I haven't been involved in, in, in much where you really could do that kind of thing, right? And so this idea of, you know, um, contributing to, to what this uh, program and project, you know, manifest as for all of us involved. Wow, you know, I, I sometimes I, you know, I'm like, you know, I wake up sometimes like, did they really tap the right person? You know, you sure it's supposed to be me doing this? I, I don't know any more than anybody else here. We're all, and that's a beautiful thing because I've learned from the students. I've learned from the participants. I've learned from the, the collaborators. I mean, um, I, Suzanne and I uh, partnered together for a part of, of the program. And I, I learned so much uh, from that whole process uh, and, and working with you, Susan. So I really wanna say thank you for that. Um, Yeruj, oh my goodness. I mean, she's just, that caring comes through in everything and every word that she speaks is there, right? Uh, and 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 so many of you as well, you know. That that's what's made this process uh, so life changing and and you know so vibrant and and useful. The care that we have all brought to the table here, right? We didn't just bring documents and and examples. We brought hearts. That's that's really where the work lies, right? Um, you know. And so uh, this has been, this has been a, one of those experiences that I, I'll treasure for the rest of my life, you know. Um, um, and and so I want to thank you, Karen, uh, you know, for giving me this chance, you know. And you know, I thought about it. If I look at the panel of folk that are presenting today, it's it's all women, you know. What what better way to to celebrate? women, you know, today, this special day in honor of women, right? Yeah, we want the whole, well, I'm glad that they gave us a day, but the truth of the matter is we're, we're it all year round, right? So um, again, 
uh, thank you for including me in this whole process. Uh, and I would be remiss if I didn't give a, a, a shout out to uh, Rebecca. She's become my buddy, really. I, I, you know, we've been virtual buddies for quite a while and, and I'm looking forward to the opportunity to, to meet all of you at some point in my life. Um, but B Rebecca has uh, been an extra special friend in this whole project. So um, that's my, uh, you know, that's what I have to share here today. I'm, I'm grateful. Well, thank you, Esperanza. You leaving me speechless, which doesn't happen too often. So thank you so much. I really appreciate all that. Um, and uh, gosh, we're going to move to Rebecca now. There's, and then we're going to have a chance for people to, to ask us questions and move on to. So uh, go ahead, Rebecca. Oh, great. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak again, Karen. And, and as others, I wanted to thank you and the rest of the team, from the students, to the advisors, it's been such an incredible experience for me. But I wanted to take a moment um, because I know the, I was granted four minutes and I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to stick to that. But I wanted to say that, and I haven't really shared this with many people, but when I, when I reached out to Arlo, I was really contemplating the idea of leading higher education because I just, I, through years and decades of, of being somewhat of an imposter, I just thought, I don't belong here, you know. Yes, I jumped through the hoops and I have a PhD in uh, developmental psychology with emphasis in quantitative analysis and multiculturalism. I did the whole, I, I played the whole game and, and I wanted to come back to my community and get back. And then I said to myself, I don't belong. I, went, I was in spaces where I heard people continually um, attacking communities. I felt that students were being painted as de uh, deficit-minded, that um, there was so much focus on cheating and plagiarism. And I just thought, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. And then I started looking for other spaces, uh, in, in particular in open education. And, and, I, and this was driven by the seed that I started with because I couldn't afford my own textbooks. Um, I couldn't even, my people couldn't even afford to buy me, you know, regular prescription glasses as often as I needed. So early on, my assessments came back that I should have been in a special ed program and left-handed. I didn't speak English. And, and, and the whole path I took was to say people like me do belong. But it really wasn't until I entered these spaces with Arlo and other, other spaces around that look beyond the idea that we're just going to maintain status quo and we're going to maintain marginalization of important key pockets of people across the continent. And so once I was in these spaces, I said, wait a minute, I do belong. There is a role for me here. There is a role for people who look like me. There's a role for immigrants. There's a role for English language learners. There's a role for people who were assessed and thought to belong in some special category of deficient individuals. But in reality, as we started to build community, and I felt that with Arlo and people like Esperanza, who is like my sister now, I started to say, how can this be built and distributed around and impact students like the students who were already leaders in our, in our particular work, but students just in, in the community. And so um, Arlo has been a space that has reassured me that as an indigenous woman, a person of color, uh, an English language learner, all of these things that there's a space for all of us and that it's our duty to start to unpack status quo, interrogate, the decolonization of higher education. And I'm so excited to be a part of it. And I'm giving it my all now because I belong in the community. And I just want to inspire others to find their little small niche where they belong so that you don't have to leave this incredible area of higher education because you feel so silenced. And so Arlo has given me my voice back as I was just about to exit and has made me feel like the voice of a woman, the voice of, of uh, First Nations people are important in all of this. And we don't have to just use traditional textbooks and traditional assessments. And so I wanna thank uh, 
uh, Arlo, and I also want to thank all of those I work with to help remind me that my role is so important because my students need me and I need my students. And, and Arlo provides this opportunity, like other spaces where we can build culturally wealthy environments and tap that on to achievement in higher education as opposed to build up breaking communities down. So um, I'd like to center before I give up the microphone on the idea of leading from the middle. As Esperanza spoke to it. Uh, she and I have worked with it together. I've worked with you know, the, the team. It's been incredible. And realize that as you come to a space, um, any of us, as we're do, doing the work, are leaders and can continue to grow in our leadership role. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Thank you for that and reminding us about leading from the middle and that leadership takes support and it, it takes a, a whole community. You know, if you're feeling completely on your own, then that's not a good place to be. In. And a lot of us can feel that way in the open ed world. I, I do want to open up to questions to our, uh, our audience that are here in the webinar with us today or in the Zoom session or whatever we call it. I, I see that there's a question in the chat. Is Arlo entirely focused on higher ed? Or does it also involve K to 12 or lifelong learning initiatives? So Arlo has been primarily about higher ed. Um, we have had a couple of folks that have had some K through 12 participation. It hasn't been a huge focus as we're thinking about our future and expanding beyond what we're going to be doing. Um, I think uh, having K through 12 be part of what we do uh, would be it would be good uh, to be able to bring that in. Now that does take other kinds of expertise and knowledge. Uh, so we'd have to sort of build towards that later, but it hasn't at this point in time, been a, been a big focus. We've been mostly about higher ed. So uh, yeah, anybody else that has any questions for us or would like to say anything? Yeah, I, Karen, uh, this is Esperanza and I'll just kind of uh, chime in uh, regarding the K through, through 12. So I'm currently part of a, a grant project through our library system and DOE that's looking at dual enrollment for K through 12, right? And um, I, I was pleasantly surprised at how much the things that I'm learning here have helped me to operate in that space of understanding, you know, what it, what it really takes to effectively tackle a project uh, like that. And so um, while the focus has been higher ed, there are a lot of things that cross over into the K through through 12 uh, arena uh, that are relevant for this project. Thank you for that, yeah. And I do welcome people to turn on cameras and mics if, if anyone would like to speak. I see Alegria has her hand raised and do you wanna, well, go ahead. Yeah, no, I just wanted to add to Esperanza's comment because um, I actually took the template that we use for the strategic plan for our participants and I used it for a national organization uh, on heritage language teaching, the National Heritage Language Resource Center um, for an initiative we are doing there for OER. So I actually think that um, the way that we put things together, it's quite adaptable to any environment. And um, I love it that we're now thinking, you know, that there's people thinking, yeah, how did we do this in K-12? Because that would be a wonderful step. Thanks. Any, anyone else out there? I know people can sometimes be shy about turning on their cameras and mics when you're uh, feeling like you're just a, a passive audience, but please, uh, please feel free to speak. Um, we love to be welcoming, as you probably have heard. I just want to say I'm just grateful every single day to work with this amazing group of people and Anyone uh, have any questions? If, if you have logistical questions. Um, so, or, so Karen, maybe you, for the, for the benefit of those who might be joining and wondering how they could get involved, maybe we talk about cohort three that's coming up. Oh yeah, I will share the link to our, um, uh, the invitation to participate. And I think Tina had her hand raised there for a second. Is that true? 
Well, yeah, I, Great. <laughs> this is all so new to me. So I, I was just maybe wanted to hear a little bit more about what um, uh, Rebecca was about being disconnected and then how is what she's doing? I mean, are, are you are you not in a regular institution? I, I, how's this working? <laughs> uh, yes, Tina. Uh, let's see. What, what I was trying to get at was that, I, I, actually, I, I do. I'm a full-time associate professor of psychology and statistics. But, um, and I have been teaching in my field for, you know, 20 plus years. Um, but what, what, what I, I live in a particular community where we, we serve um, predominantly um, to, uh, students of, of, of immigrants. And so it, it's, it's not been an easy place to be, you know, in the last couple of years because of just the national rhetoric around what it means, you know, to be a student in, in some of these pockets of Southern California. So it, it just, it was so heavy, you know, because I was one of those students when I was younger. And um, I just thought it's too heavy for me. I can't carry, can't carry this. And so um, I was exhausted, the, the transition online, um, um, kind of like the disappearance of these spaces where we had some, you know, community on campus for women of color. So a lot of that kind of got wiped out during, you know, our shift to online. And um, I, what I saw around me was people getting very punitive with students and no late work and, you know, monitor track, eye tracking and, you know, all, all of this, you know, and I just thought it, in my community, it's, it's a, what we call the school to prison pipeline. And so I just felt like I'm, I'm, I'm part of like this, I'm, I'm, I'm becoming like a warden, you know, in the school to prison pipeline. And it wasn't until I stepped out of my immediate community and, and started looking at different ways of assessing, different ways of co-creating, um, different ways of revising and providing, you know, all of these different opportunities for students that I, I felt how we recentered myself. Does that answer the question? You're muted, Tina. Yes, yes. In, in, in summary, yes. I love the question. For sure. I, I think that a lot of folks struggle with, you know, who, what am I doing, especially mid-career people and thinking about where am I going next and how am I doing this? And open education is a way of looking towards a future that feels brighter and different. And we, we hear a lot about higher education transformation, you know, instead of waiting around for somebody else to transform it into something like this is the work that we can be doing and make it making it such that it does focus on on students and especially those students that haven't been the center of focus in the past. And we're, we're building that. I think that we're very dedicated to building that. Equity and grading, yeah. <laughs> we, could, we could go on and on and on about the ungrading movement. We still have a few minutes as if anyone else wants to be brave enough to <laughs> join us in this conversation or if any of the other panelists uh, wanted to add anything while people are thinking. So, so Cameron, I'll just um, add uh, an experience that I had just yesterday. So there's, um, if I'm not mistaken, a group called ISKME. I'm, maybe I'm saying it wrong. That's right. But they reached out to me, you know, just wanting to do a, an interview and, and asked me some questions about, um, you know, how has this work and other work that I'm doing in, the, um, in, in service of STEM equity, um, you know, how is that? my exposure and work in that area manifested itself in my actual classrooms, right? I mean, because ultimately for, for us, you know, the, us faculty folk, that's where the rubber meets the road, really, in terms of the impact that you're having with your students, right? And I told them that um, my exposure and work and collaboration and learning from other people um, in this arena has has helped me to improve my people skills. I would tell anybody that's that's you know that's going to be my lifelong project: people skills, right? Um, 
And, you know, it, it really has helped me to see that my students are, are just as human and have just as many needs and, and concerns as I do, right? Uh, a lot of times as faculty, we take the, 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 the mindset that it's my class and, you know, my way or the highway kind of thinking, right? But when you really embrace the idea that you are there to serve your students and, and be of support to them as they make their, you know, as they're journeying, right? Um, that, that, that's a different way of thinking about it. You know, I told the story that, you know, uh, you know, recently in Louisiana, we went through one of the worst hurricane events that we've had in, 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 a, in a while. And, you know, to have students reach out to me and said, I don't have any internet right now. I can't do anything. I'm doing this from my phone. And um, Karen and some of them may remember I had to drive, you know, 30, 40 miles to be able to pick up an internet signal to sit in on some meetings and to get some work done. Um, that's when you really re realize if nothing else, you're, you're in this together. This is a together thing. This is not a me versus you. This is a us. This is a we. And that's what I really have uh, appreciated about Arlo. It's, it's helped me to be a more we person. Thank you for that. Thank you. I, I know we only have a couple of minutes left. That may be a really wonderful thing to, to end on. I don't want to cut it off, though, because we do have three minutes. I know some folks need to get going to the next session. Also, we'd love to stick around even after the recording stops and chat with anybody if Liz will let us use the link longer for, some, for those of you that like smaller conversations. Um, but uh, I want to thank everybody for coming, for attending this, for being here today, especially the incredible panelists that have been part of Arlo and for all of you who took your time to be here with us for this hour. Thank you so much.